In this part of the tutorial, we're going to start with the client side development. So um, we're going to be using Angular command line tools, which will help us to generate projects, components, and all the light. If you don't have that configured on your system, you can head over to this Angular site here. And there you'll see this get started guide that shows you how to install it and also how to start using it. So I already have that done and I'm going to generate my client application in this static folder. So what I'll do, I'll right click and get the path to that folder. So I'll just copy this. And I'll open up my command prompt. And inside here, I will face up or switch to the drive where my project is located. And then I will switch to the directory I just copied. So in order to create a new Angular project, I will just type here engine new. And for the project name, I'm going to call it rest client and hit enter. Now this will take a little while to complete. So I will pause the video and come back when the project generation is done. So the project creation is done and I will be using Visual Studio Code to develop this front end application. So I will just go ahead here and switch to the project folder. So CDRS client and I will open it in Visual Studio Code. So code dot. So the project is now open in Visual Studio Code. I will also just go ahead and run the application. So ng save and I will add this open flag so that after the build, the project will automatically run on the browser. So the application is running and we can see this default page that Angular 4 comes with. I will just close that for the moment and let us for a moment think about what we want to do. We want to be able to display all the users we have in our backend and have the possibility to delete and update the users as well as create new users. All this from our front end application. So I will start by creating a new user class in this front end that has the same fields like the users in the back end. And I will be using Angular command line tools to do that. So I'll open the integrated command line that Visual Studio Code comes with. And inside here, I will generate a new class. So ng g class, and I'll call the class user. And as you can see, a new user class has been created in this source app folder. So let's create the fields. It will be id of time number f name of type string and l name of type string as well and that is done i'll close this and then i'll also like to generate two components the first component will permit us to see all the users and also have buttons to either delete create or update the users. So I will call this component list. So ng g component. I would like to have that in a folder called component. And I will call it list user. By so doing, Angular will create a component called list user component. So I'll hit enter. And that component has been created. So I'll also create a component that will permit us to create new users as well as update existing users. This component at the end of the day will basically just be an HTML5 form. So ng g component. I'll also place it in the components folder and I'll call it user form. And now we need a way to be able to navigate to various components. So in order to do that, we need to add routes in this appmodules.ts file. So I will start by importing the router module. So import. Uh, 
and also route from angular router this one then we declare the various routes so const up route of type route so this is basically an array that specifies all the routes that we are going to be using in our application i will start by declaring the default route here and we do it like this path i'll set this to nothing and we we'll specify the component that that route is going to be using so component this is going to be the list user component so next we we'll specify the component that is going to enable us to create as well as update users so i will just copy this one here and then paste it here and i'll just specify a single route of op which stands for operations and this will be using the user form component we also need to add that as import so i'll copy this router model and in this import here we add router module dot for root and pass in the app routes that we just declared so that is done so i made a mistake here let me go ahead and fix that this is supposed to be just op and save with all those routes declared how can we then see the various pages all we need to do is to head to this app component.html file i'll get rid of all of these things and I'll declare a diff of class container. This will later on be a bootstrap class. And I'll set here router outlet. So meaning when we navigate to any route, the page will display here so let us see how that looks like in the browser so we can now navigate to the various routes this is the default route that shows this list user work we are going to be having here a table that displays all the users and if we go to the op route we get this user form work and in the future we are going to be having here a form so in the next video we are going to start by developing the service class until then see you